Hey guys, welcome to Spy Plays. Today we have a very special video on one of our favorite decks, Crick, Son of Yagmoth. We're going to be covering a blazing fast brew from one of our Spy Play members, John. We'll be hitting the combos, who wants to play this deck, special cards, and be giving you a primer to follow in the description. Thank you for all the support, and if you enjoy the video, give us a like and subscribe. Hey guys, welcome back. We're going to be talking about the Phyrexian Meth Lab by my boy John. He uh, built this Crick deck, and honestly, it is freaking amazing. Um, we're just going to be going over the deck, the combos, favorite cards, questions about the deck, and just things like that. So, yeah, without further ado, John, take it away. Yeah, um, so I'm ready to introduce all of you guys to my baby that I've kept secret for so long. Um, but I, you know, I think it's time some people know about this beautiful creation of mine. <laughs> so let's see here. Crick is Crick's a very cool card. Let's just read it out real quick. So it says, you know, it's four and then triple Phyrexian black for a lifelinking 2-2 two -two that says for each, the main ability, for each black and a cost, you may pay two life rather than pay that mana. Um, and that's kind of the main really important thing. The second thing on the bottom, or I guess the third thing on the bottom that's uh, kind of cool sometimes that comes up is whenever you put a cast a black spell, you get a put a plus one plus one counter on him. Um, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, the main ability of him is that for each black and a cost, you may pay two life rather than pay that mana. Um, and so what that essentially means is what this deck is going to be doing is you're going to be casting Crick for four mana and paying six life almost always. Um, maybe you have spare black floating and you can use that. But usually you want to get it out um, as fast as you can. So you just pay the four. Um, and so that puts you at 32 life. And so what that essentially says is after you play Crick, you have... 15 mana to use um before and if you use more than that you die right um and then for each it also winds up saying for each two life you gain you get a black mana um <laughs> and so that can lead Pretty to some wild. very yeah some wild and crazy things um the strength of that uh winds up being uh yeah. from crick is crick gives you so much mana it allows you to essentially just cast everything. Um, and yeah. so what you're able to do with that is you're able to play a, a bunch of these combos that aren't great because you're in mono black, but um, you're able to assemble them uh, so quickly due to the amount of mana that you have. Um, and being in mono black gives you access to all these tutors. And so what you're able to do is you're able to play a super super high density of gas cards or cards that will wind up uh, cascading or finding you something that's going to win the game um and so even though some of these cards like aren't great and cost a lot of mana um like your you know grim tutor diabolic tutor even right. uh, deck which you know there's so many tutors yeah. horrible card right transmute to mirror house guard <laughs> yeah <Right. laughs> but when you get to like negate the downside of tutors um you're essentially and the downside has always been like the tempo loss that comes from them like you're adding that mana on top of whatever the card actually already costs right so if i cast like a demonic tutor and let's say i'm playing vintage or something i cast a demonic tutor and then i play like an ancestral recall instead of being a one mana draw three it's a three mana draw three now obviously the tutor's good because it has like versatility but um yeah, in this deck, every mm -hmm. time you play a tutor, not only is the cost of that tutor reduced, but the cost of the card that you're getting with it is almost always reduced. Right. So I wonder... you essentially have like no tempo loss in almost anything you're doing once you get the crick out. Right. I want to. I want to go over. Uh, we can talk about like the general archetype of this deck because I know that like people are interested. Like, is this a mid range deck? Is this a uh, like super fast deck is i mean <laughs> we know what it is but yeah. yeah if you could go over what what type of player is going to want to pick up this deck and what what um i mean we kind of went over a little bit but yeah what what type of deck is this and what type of player would want to play yeah, this deck that's a good direction yeah. um so this deck is if you like winning the game fast uh and often and consistently this is the deck that you want to play um this deck 
it blitzes faster Zooms. than it, it it is a flying fucking wheelchair i swear to god i'll say i've seen this deck win on turn one or two more than any other deck in cdh and we played a lot of cdh yeah um just essentially crick says all right you can now cast anything you want um and so you get him down and um it is it is balls um and uh what was the other question you asked you said what kind of player would want to play this deck and then what kind of play style is it yeah um it's it's definitely if you like playing the proactive uh, storm decks or decks that are really just you know concerned about your own proactive game plan um this is a deck that does that let's and, forget about the proactive tag that's not descriptive enough this is like storm reanimator yeah basically storm, this is yeah. with, the doom, with like doomsday piles and you're, stuff and you're also deal. you're not very concerned with interacting with your opponents um you're concerned with trying to put together your own stuff and make sure it all happens good um right and make sure it all resolves what's the i want to i want to go over actually the because i know there's other crick decks out in the you can say the market um yeah. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> i've seen those decks i want to see what what makes yours i guess special versus like those decks. yeah so um a lot of people have opted to make crick into a little bit of a grindier deck um yeah yeah um i think just through the nature of Crick, it's always going to have like a certain amount of speed. Um, but people have opted to make it grindier. And I think some reasons for that are uh, there are a lot of grindy metas out there. Um, and I think people play this deck and they just want to play nothing else. But if you play in like any format, you'll notice uh, like a 60 card format. And I think CDH is kind of the same way. Uh, and if you play any 60 card format, uh, you'll notice that there are some decks that um, that are like really good and then they fall off a little bit and then they're really good again. You like pick them up for a weekend uh, or you like they're you're like they're like your second deck. And you're like, the issue is, this That's deck is really fucking good when it's good. Um, but when people pack like a shit ton of hate for it, you're going to have trouble. Yeah. The issue is if people want to shut you down, they definitely can. Exactly. But they got to bring the uh, they, have to, it. they have to target you. Right. They need to like change their deck a little bit and play strangely. Yes. Um, what are the... So then you just don't bring the deck that week. Yeah. What are the, what are the main, I'd say inclusions that makes this deck different than other, other correct decks? So there's a couple, um, the inclusion of doomsday lines uh that is definitely special I see. yeah doomsday lines uh my consistency of my tutor package um, i run a very heavy tutor package that a lot of other lists don't run in favor of having more versatility um and being able to like do more things um, yeah you're playing an absolute ball yes like I, holy crap it's like every other card <laughs> <laughs> in the sorcery uh, section it's literally like every other card. let's yeah. also mention that like the heart and soul of this deck is obviously still from the beginning for your build at least it has been the whole final parting it, to oh, yeah. get reanimate and villas yep. yeah um but yeah so uh, essentially where were we the before tutors. you yeah yeah so we're just talking about uh or sorry we're talking about what cards make it different so doomsday is one of them yeah, the cards that make this deck different are um, I play some Doomsday lines that can win with zero mana that are uh, they're really rapid fast. Um, I also play Sacrifice, which while it may sound like okay, that's only one card, but um, it can add to your speed considerably and give you access to a lot of weird lines, whether it be sacrificing Crick to cast Pyrrhon of the Abyss and then reanimating him post Pyrrhon of the Abyss and assembling a win, or if it is getting your Villas onto the battlefield when you already have low life, um, you just draw like uh, you know, like 10 cards or so. Um, and then if you find your sacrifice uh, or can tutor for it, you just make eight mana for zero. Uh, and then you still have your Crick out, um, which allows you to do some really nutty things. Um, and then I also play, I think most decks at this point are on like a large reanimator uh, suite or on a large amount of uh, reanimation spells. I'm also on that. 
Um, Do a lot and... of them play Shallow Grave? Is that a... Uh, I... I don't think a lot of them play Shallow Grave. Oh, um, you just I'm on really Shallow happy. Grave for a specific reason um that i might talk about later oh um, yeah we'll talk about that one later so but it's it's not um it's it, that's more of just like it help it's like another it adds to the consistency of reanimation spells and it's also another like instant speed one like necromancy that okay. can be useful in certain situations well, we're gonna we're gonna go over uh so what are what are the main you would say like combos or what what's the main thing you want to do to win the game with this deck yeah so pretty much as alex said the heart and soul of this deck uh comes through its efficiency of putting villas onto the battlefield as the villas and crick combination having both of these on the battlefield is just nigh unstoppable it, it feels like you're darth vader force choking like four players uh <laughs> <laughs> uh, once you put a villas on the battlefield it's like all right you just get rewarded for playing magic oh, um would you say you, this deck is like crick tutor for villas like yeah, yeah. um villas is the easiest way to win the game um <laughs> you, you just you can either tutor for it directly if you think your opponents have like um have like miscasts or fluster storms or whatever right. or you can uh do it a lot cheaper just by casting final parting and reanimating it um yeah. which yeah. is like one of the key things about the deck is yeah um, basically essentially once you have crick out it's a three mana win to just find your final parting and put villas on the battlefield because of how the deck is constructed once you get villas out you're going to draw so many cards and just chain together so many spells um right. you, Cause... you're, you're able to figure out to put together one of your yeah wins. let's go over yeah. what exactly like it yeah does because like yeah. it Basically, like with Villas, I know with Crick, you can use, if people don't know, you can use Crick to pay for any cost that's black. So even like in a creature's activated ability, yep. how it says and Swamp. And happens to have an ability on him that says right. pay two target creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. And you can pay another two life to play the black mana in that cost. And then you draw four cards, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You, you pay four life, draw four cards, give exactly. something minus one, minus you one. You draw one card for every life you lose. That is insane. Um, but yeah, you this just is really it. good if somebody's playing a lot of mana dorks. Oh, that <laughs> too. Yeah. You can also just wipe, like, it, like if you can reanimate Villas and then there's like stack pieces out that are annoying you, yeah. you can just completely just destroy all of them. And yeah. Then go it's off. one of the reasons why Crick has always been very good against Hate Bear decks. As long as, as, uh, as, long as you can keep Crick out, then you don't get. Oh, excuse me. You don't get like Draineth on turn one, um, mm -hmm. which is a rough moment. Um, but as long as that doesn't happen, uh, you can just get out Villas and basically just shoot anything in your way and be like, "All right, you're a problem." <laughs> yeah. So now, so now we have Villas out. What, what, what are we trying to get like to win, like to kill everyone? How are we killing yeah. everyone? So there are a couple. I think there are. There's about four different ways we can actually win the game. Okay, let's go over um, this pretty quickly. So the easiest one that people probably see is we have an Aether Flux Reservoir, right? right. Uh, okay. And so if you know, you're know you casting spells for zero mana by paying life, and you're also gaining life when casting them, uh, if you have a Villas out, the, you can just cast stuff and you know pay two life, cast your Duress on someone, uh, draw some cards, um, Game cast life. your whatever draw a bunch more cards gain life as well and you just keep going up and up you start and netting so much that you're just gonna win everything you do nets cards uh and nets life and right. so and it costs like no mana so eventually you can get there um right. also there if you can't manually storm uh you don't have like a draw engine out or something like you don't have your villas mm -hmm. you can put together your aether flux and leshrac sigil combo which is a very funny one Think, can you pull up that card for me, Jesse? Yeah, let me pull that card. Yeah. Holy, what is? Yeah. What is so, the artwork I, on that thing? My Vigil Lord. is a <laughs> old card um, that doesn't do very much, uh, but it, it is it is useful in some weird circumstances by itself. Um, but essentially, the main ability on it is it's two black for an enchantment. It's a basically just a piece of cardboard that says two black, return it to its owner's hand. So what that winds up saying is, oh, this is. A and pay for life to cast it pay for life to return it to your hand and if you have an aether flux out if you have eight spells uh, or you have storm count eight 
you can net life every time you cast a spell. Um, right. And just gain infinite life, shoot everybody with Aether Flux. Um, That's the funny. second part. Do a lot of people play that card just for reference? Or is that what you have put in? Um, a fair amount of people play it and okay. a fair amount of people don't. Okay. So it's kind of like a 50 50. That's They're a very interesting card. It. I actually Something. haven't. Yeah, I haven't really seen that card in a lot of lists um, for me, and I actually didn't even think of that. I was wondering why that was in there. <laughs> yeah, something I forgot to mention that I play that other lists don't as well is I'm actually on a fair amount of hand disruption. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Yes. Um, people have never really liked hand disruption um, for a couple reasons. Wait, let's um, go over no the combos. We can talk about that after, I think. Okay. We'll save okay. that for later. Um, but yeah, so the... So after that, after the Aether Flux Lesher Exigil combo, right. we have our Chainer combos. Um, right, okay, Chainer. Those ones are pretty nice as well. Um, so usually how we assemble our Chainer combos is with a Buried, buried Alive and Reanimation spell. Um, and what yeah. that will wind up putting in the grave is we'll get a Chainer, a Grey Merchant of Asphodel, and a Sack Outlet being our Demure House Guard. Um, and so what that winds up doing is it says you can, Chainer says essentially in Crick, you can pay triple black or six life and then pay three life and mm -hmm. reanimate a creature from any graveyard. Um, and so what you do is you reanimate your sack outlet, reanimate your gray merchant, and gray merchant will usually deal around nine damage to each player and gain you 18 life. And so you sack or excuse me and gain you 27 life <laughs> yeah, yeah. and so you sacrifice it with your sack outlet and you just keep reanimating it and sacking it with chainer and crick out right right because a grave gray merchant you guys didn't know it says each opponent and then you gain that much so yes. even if you only have like for for say uh for math sake if you have five devotion everyone's gonna take every other opponent so you're playing against three other people they're gonna take five each you're gonna gain 15 yeah yeah that's that's how that works so if you're yeah. wondering how does the combo like keep going that's that's why it works like that yep um so yeah so then, you get that combo out you just kill the table right once you have yeah it. um i uh, theoretically if someone's if everyone's at really low life and there's only one player it can like fail to work because your your gray merchant um doesn't have enough devotion to gain right. eight life every time but often, even in games where that happens, if if there's if two players are dead, it's probably because the game has gone on for a while and you probably have a bunch of permanents on the board, which right. you're going to wind up probably being able to deal the eight damage. I've, in general, I've, it rarely comes up. It's like I, um, playing I like played Malcolm. hundreds, almost like probably almost a thousand times. And uh, and I've goldfish it thousands of times. Um, yeah. And I I've never... I've never had it come up in an actual. It's game. like having Malcolm and Glinthorn Buccaneer, and then being stranded with like one player that you can't kill, right? It just right. It almost just, never comes it up. It doesn't happen. Uh, it might, but you're very, very lucky in that such situation. What? So yeah. let's. Uh, so we went over the chamber combo. We got the Aether Flux, Flash Rack yeah. Sigil. Uh, um, what's the next combo you want to go over? And you have your Doomsday, Doomsday. combo. Doomsday. This is this so is probably Doomsday. my favorite combo. And yeah, Doomsday is pretty cool. Doomsday can assemble a number of different combos. Um, yeah. One of them. Let's go for the most assemble. common one. Yeah. Yeah. So the most common one that you usually want to do is our zero mana Doomsday line. You're going to need someone to be on uh, playing Fossa's Oracle mm -hmm. in order for this one to work. But essentially what we do is we play Doomsday. Um, then we play like a couple of cycling and draw spells in our cards. Like we have Aphotic Wisps, uh, I think is our only card that actually just is a just says draw a card for black mana it's in the instance you can oh, see it up there there you go oh this one. okay um right but okay. you play some cycling cards like baron more which is like you know it's it's not a great card it's a tap land right but, um but yeah. it has this double function of cracking our top deck tutors right. as well as you know um being a land when we need it right and then we have we have a couple more cycling cards um we have another one that's a five mana tutor that i can't remember the name of um, no it's not brain spoil it is a uh... masterminds yeah it's master no it's not masterminds acquisition uh, uh, it's razaketh's right yeah um, oh, 
That's the one. Oh wow. Okay, that's a weird one. Oh, it has cycling. That's right. Okay. Yeah, you turn you turn into Gitaxian probe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, there's a couple cyclers in the deck, um, uh, like right. such, and they help you with your doomsday. And so what essentially what happens is you have 26 life. Yep. Uh, and doomsday. Uh, you can cast the doomsday, draw a card, draw your cruel bargain which basically says triple black, draw four cards, lose half your life. Um, <laughs> so you play that, you draw four cards. Uh, normally you're at like almost zero life. You're very close to dead after this. Right. And so the four cards you draw are Petal, Dark Ritual, Praetor's Grasp, and LED. And so what you can do is you Petal, Dark Ritual, cast Praetor's Grasp, take someone's Thassa's Oracle, and then play LED and, and cast the Thassa's Oracle. <laughs> yeah, so, okay, that's crazy. So you're going to grab, yeah, you grab Lotus Petal, you get Dark Ritual, then you Praetor's Grasp, and if you guys don't know yeah. what that does, we're just going over this kind of quickly, but yeah, you, you search someone's a library, you take the card, exile it. Since it's in exile, mm -hmm. um, you can crack Lion's Eye Diamond, and even though it says discard your hand, it's not in your hand, it's in exile. Yeah. But now you have three blue, and you can play uh, Thrasis Oracle. John did this to me in a game, and I literally like shit my pants. I was like, what the <laughs> hell? Uh, he, he took my Thrasis Oracle. I was playing Rock Silas, and I was like, why is he taking this? You're like, wait, but, I'm supposed to be the fast one. Yeah, and then oh. and then he just like plays it, and I'm like, oh my god, he Doomsday lined me. I was like, what the <laughs> hell? I was like, how does he win with Doomsday? And I was like, oh, that's how he wins. But yeah, there's so many, Doomsday gets really complicated. We're yeah. not gonna go over all the lines. We might have like yeah, you something assemble. in the primer or something about like extra doomsday lines, uh, just to help you guys. But um, that's pretty much the biggest one I'd say you'd be going for. It's it's the best one. It's the best. Okay, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Being um, zero mana, is really cool. Oh, that's right, it's zero mana. That that's why you do it. It is zero mana. Um, and so after doomsday, we got doomsday chainer, aether flux. I'm trying to think of the other combos we got. Yeah, so the the combo, uh, the last combo that we have is just the it's a commander agnostic combo. Oh, um, is it CDC? That, yeah, that's uh, no, it's um Aether Flux, uh, Sensei's Divining Top, and Bolus' Citadel. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately, this combo does not win with Dranith, but um, it's it does win through most other things that would, you know, destroy our commander. Right. It's just another like piece that up the consistency i'm guessing yeah bolus of citadel is fine in the deck it's a piece of gas so you play that either flux is already combo card and then uh sensei's divining top is also just like a fine card um because it can it can dig you pretty deep uh seeing the extra three cards in a deck that has about 20 pieces of gas in it uh it can really just help you like find your your demonic tutor your diabolic right. tutor your... basically if you have bullets to sit on since his divine shot like you quote unquote could whiff but you're gonna it's like ad nauseum and whiffing you're drawing so many cards you're, you're not gonna like you're gonna see yeah, yeah um, it's and... and you have so many tutors in the deck that like it's actually even less likely that you would whiff yeah, off that. because you have so many tutors in the deck usually what happens is you just you fl you just kind of like find a single tutor and then you get your vampiric tutor and you put pure into the abyss on top of your deck <laughs> and then you cast pure for seven life with citadel and draw half your deck which is i've heard good cool and is that the last combo of the deck or is that oh yeah i mean pure into the abyss is another like thing that will win you the game uh, it doesn't oh no i'm just thinking of like the things that win you the game That's yeah right. the things that actually win you the game um i those are all the things that can actually like close okay. out the game Yes. Uh, we can talk about a little, we can do a little quick thing on Sadisi. Um, so is that the co same combo with like Chainer and that? Yeah, so that can be yeah an honorable mention. Uh, yeah. Sadisi is really cool because what you can do with Sadisi is Sadisi sacks itself and tutors for a card. And so what you can do is you can get your Chainer with Sadisi, um, and Chainer can reanimate Sadisi any number of times bound by your life total. So you basically put this chainer into play which is already a combo piece and then you can pay eight life to tutor anything to your hand any number of times um, how does this i know people mentioned how does this win under rule so how this wins under rule of law is it takes a turn to set up because you need the sadisi in your graveyard um, oh, okay but 
So you cast the Sadisi, right? Okay. Um, and you get your chainer. And then on the next turn, what you do is you play your chainer, you reanimate your Sadisi, um, right. you get a Intomb, uh, then you go to your opponent's upkeep and okay. you can, or you can wait for them to cast a spell or anything. Yeah. You can then end, you can entomb Vile Entomber, um, which is pretty hot. Uh, right. okay. <laughs> Hell yeah, this card. I love this card. It looks so cool. Yes. So Vile Entomber is just entomb on a creature. So yeah. then you use Chainer to reanimate Vile Entomber, which will put... Uh, Gray Merchant of Asphodel in the graveyard. Okay. So now and then you do that. Yeah. So you have Gray Merchant in the graveyard. What you can do is you can reanimate the Gray Merchant, gain some life. Right. Then you can reanimate the um, the Sadisi to sacrifice the violent and yeah, and have it uh, sacrifice the violent tumor with its exploitability. Mm -hmm. And then uh, because violent tumor is sacrificed. You can get anything you want with the Sadisi. It doesn't matter at this point. You just, uh, what you do now is you reanimate the Violent Tumor again and you have Violent Tumor get your sacrifice outlet from the graveyard to Mirror oh, House Guard. Oh, okay. So you get one of the one of those sacks. Is it just a Mirror House Guard? Is this the only sack outlet? Or is there some other ones? Yeah, it's the only sack outlet. Okay. I, I like this one because it transmutes, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Demir House Guard is nice because it it's not only like this, it's like, a, basically if you had to run another card in the slot it'd just be a dead like uh, it'd be you know, carrying feeder or, right? first year, or carrying feeder or whatever yeah, yeah. um and that card you know it's just a sacrifice outlet mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't do anything um but with this card you can transmute it for your four drops like uh yeah. you can get aether flux reservoir with it um worst comes to worst you mm -hmm. can get a diabolic shooter with it which is kind of bad but um it's not that bad with crick because everything everything's so <laughs> cheap yeah this thing. We're, you're looking at like if you guys are wondering like you're looking at all these costs like literally just take the black out of all these cards and yeah. that is the actual cost of the card basically yeah and so like that's why when you look you see like oh seven i mean this is pure people know what that is but like this tutor cool. it's like two black black it's like no one would that's ever one. ever look at this tutor and play it in a cdh deck but Crick allows you to play all these really bad cards, quote unquote, uh, yeah. because he makes them good. Like that is and it ups your density. Good. Yeah, it ups your density of like, yeah, this deck wins very consistently, and it, it it's able to grab what it wants very consistently, which is very yeah. nice. So yeah, usually if you have Crick out, um, and if you can keep it out, even like when things are weird, um, you can, because there's such a high density of tutors, even if something goes wrong, you can like find your missing pieces for, oh, like there's, say I got my, my Crick Drake or something. Uh, yeah. I can bide my time tutor for a homeward path because oh, I right. play, play homeward tutors. Card. Yeah. <laughs> bide my time, get that, get it back. And then, you know, do my thing or, you know, I can, <laughs> you card? can just, yeah. Um, you, you just have so many cards that represent like a bunch of other cards in your deck. Um, and it is it's a little daunting for new players because you yeah. see so many tutors and like, you don't know what to get with them. This is definitely uh, a hard deck. It is a hard, it's a deck that if you want to like learn, it's very, very cool though. It's definitely for a more experienced player, well but it's, it's very cool to learn. Um, I, I think now we can probably get into uh, what, this is going to be like your your favorite cards, I guess. But we can also go into more of like uh, the cards that you play that are like different that you also enjoy playing, which is I wanted to talk about too, which is uh, the like grief, uh, duress, inquisition, like cards like that, because those are like oh. I don't see that in any other list. And I think that is like very, very interesting. Yeah, the I am definitely one of the few. I'm, I'm one of the only people that run the um the hand disruption cards. Very, very um, cool. I, a lot of people say that they don't like them because you don't know like who's going to have the interaction in hand or, and you're playing against three different players. So it's like hard yeah. to gauge that. Um, I'd say that's kind of a, a, that's, that's the main thing where I think that's like not a lie, but it's a, it's something that I can tell when someone says that they're, they haven't played CDH or like, yeah, definitely CDH for like a while. 
Because when you start playing against certain decks, you know what decks are going to be mulling for hands with interaction. Yeah. And so you can start playing around it. And when you're winning on turn one, yeah. uh, turn two, um, if or probably, sorry, if, if you're going to be doing like a duress or something, probably turn two. And basically that's going to be your backup. You know who's holding up mana. Like you can see who has yeah. like mana held up or you can tell like this yeah. person probably mulled for a force of will. So like you can duress them. And basically what it does is it just eats a counter spell. It eats a counter spell, and worst comes to worst, you see what they're working with, exactly. and so you can play around it and be like, "All right, well, maybe I can't like quite punch through because they have like three counter spells or something." And you're like, "All right, I'll have to just bide my time and not right. do anything too crazy." Right. It also a uh, uh, weird thing. It reveals to everyone, so it's not like yeah. a get probe or something. So like everyone else sees their hand as well. So it's kind of cool because like say they have counters and stuff but they also are like they have a win con in hand people will be threatening them more you know they'll be like yeah. oh they're the threat at the table but like you're just sitting there like being super proactive you're like Haha. um <laughs> they do yeah they uh they're, they're cards that feel like they get more rewarding um they, they feel like they're better when you're playing in person i know a lot of people play online oh that's um, true yeah harder, it's a little bit harder to read players online yeah, um just because true. i don't know uh, you can't really, you can't do like the reading body language of stuff, but you can, you know, you can like guesstimate by seeing things like cards in hand, um, the plays that they've made, mana held open, and you can, you can get a, you can get a pretty good gist of who is going to have the interaction and who is not going to. Um, and I have been able to fight through a lot of well, stuff. I've, I've by seen. It's very, very interesting. Uh, is there any card that you wanted to go over, Alex, that you thought was kind of interesting? Um, I just thought the application of Violent Tumor was kind of interesting. Maybe you can talk about that, because this is, like, another card that I know we discussed a little bit for this deck that opens up some different combo lines with Chainer and Grey Merchant. Yeah, yeah but... Violent Tumor is very cool. Yeah, I think we talked about that with, like, the Chainer and stuff. This is more of, like, little, like, pet cards, not, like, combos, I guess. Yeah, oh, um... I don't know. I'm just happy that Asmodeus isn't in this list. If I can <laughs> mention that. Oh yeah, or there's so, cards that you like over other cards, I guess. That would be another I'll, thing. I'll just mention Asmodeus because we've talked about this. But Asmodeus he's, is... he's six mana, right? So he's four black black. Yeah. Um, you can pay three black to draw seven cards, and then you can pay one black, return all cards exiled with Asmodeus to your hand, and you lose that much life. That's a lot of black mana. Okay, if you think about that, if to draw seven cards off Asmodeus, that's four mana and then 19 life. If you want to draw 14 cards, that's 32 life. Yeah. You're dead after that. You can't, yeah. you like can't do it. So it's essentially okay. in a deck I'm very skeptical uses, of Asmodeus. Yeah, okay. in a deck that uses its life for everything, um, that life is so important. So just like throwing it away on stuff yeah. is not what you want to do. Like people call this the the just like throw your life away on everything. Um, but you don't want to do that because like you're you kind of, you don't want to play. You don't want to actively be playing cards that say that make you lose more life um you're playing in black so it's hard to do that <laughs> yeah. um because like a lot of things will just make you lose life but right. um it is yeah losing uh, that much life just winds up not being worth it now I will is say, valuable from cards like tendrils yeah um oh tendrils, that was another thing that was that was one of the ones that i was gonna play yeah about. tendrils is tendrils very is cute cool. and um when tendrils become specifically good or very good is when you're playing uh, when you have blood celebrant out um, when you have blood celebrant out and you can cast a bunch of spells and then use tendrils as a mana ritual essentially um right. it can lead to some pretty nutty turns that tendrils um, basically i mean in this deck is uh what's that dramatic reversal yeah it's, it's two mana it's a, and you yeah. gain a bunch of life which in this deck gaining life is just getting more mana so yep so that's, yeah. that's kind of what it is and it's kind of cute i like that though because it's storm it kind of goes with the same plan you're doing with like aether yeah. flux and that stuff and hey maybe there's some games where you can just manually storm one turn and just kill everyone <laughs> like i'm sure like that um, might come up you can't kill everyone but oh is it target you, in, oh, it's yeah. target. oh okay. it's, it's target player but oh, you okay. could 
sometimes kill like a player. Um, I can see it being possible if somebody's, you know, taking some damage and then you suspect they're holding a forcible, so you tendrils them down and then you play your Aetherflux Reservoir to win, something like that. Usually when yeah. it becomes really good is either as a life ritual post Vilis, uh, when you yeah. have Necropotence out um, and you need to just like recoup some life and play a bunch of spells. Yeah. Uh, or when you're doing blood celebrant stuff and casting a bunch of things. Yeah, another thing with like, uh, I know there's Voltaic Key and Manifold Key. Those, yeah. yeah, I know you play those because I mean it makes sense since everything, everything that's colorless is basically what you have to pay for. So if you're mm -hmm. able to like untap your like Mana Crypt, your or sorry your Mana Vault, your Grim Monolith yep. for one, you're just like netting so much mana in this deck that I think it's really I'm cool to include quite, both of those. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that is another difference. Uh, some things that I play that other people don't. Um, yeah, so in this deck, you need, you really need the colorless mana, right? Yeah, um, more than anything. The black mana is covered by Crick, and you're kind of just wondering, all right, how can, you know, yeah, you play like a bunch of artifacts to try and, you know, to try and make all of your colorless mana. And uh, one of the things that I've noticed with this deck is you want a mulligan really hard for uh, your fast mana to get your crick out um, yeah. and to be able to cast your other spells. Crick turn them. one is like what you should be looking for and you can yeah, get it, it very consistently. I, I think if you like, if you want to get crick turn one and you mull for it, I'd say like 90% of the time you can get it. Like there's, um, there's very I don't know about 90% of the time. I don't, I don't have the numbers on me exactly, oh, okay. um, but- it, It's high, it's, it's yeah. maybe, very consistent. maybe 75. I play the keys, uh, again, one of the things that I do with this deck that other people do, don't is this deck is very much based on consistency and uh, it's it's based on optimate it's based on optimizing your primary game plan right. um, and doing that as consistently and fast as possible. Right. And now what the manifold and voltaic key do is they turn any if you can cast any monolith like a grim monolith and basalt monolith. Um, or or uh, mana vault um first of all if you can play any of those they can they're a mana ritual right um so if you have any of your vaults out and uh, or your monoliths out and you play a voltaic key or manifold key it's it's two mana make three right right um and then it can be better than that on future turns right exactly. um but then even if you have like a soul ring or mana crypt out um if you it's going to be mana neutral the turn that you play it and the next turn, it's gonna be, it's gonna be like, it should make one mana with the soul ring and right. uh, or mana crypt. And then with, if you have your monoliths, it'll make two mana. So it'll be a soul ring, um, and that winds up being very good at. Uh, it, it winds up allowing you to have a, a lot more hands be playable or faster that weren't, um, because most of the time with this deck, you have such a high density of tutors that you really are just looking for the mana yeah. you're like all right how can i make my colorless mana and cast my crick because i'm i'm just playing i've talked about it um this deck plays 21 pieces of gas cards that essentially um if left unchecked you'll be able to tutor for something that wins the game right, right? you'll be able to tutor for like a villa or put something into play and kind of win um and that's that's a fifth of the cards. <laughs> yeah, um, no, you decks do not play with that level of consistency, right? Um, most of them do not. This, cannot. Afford I, to I will do say that. this is probably one of the most consistent decks I've seen attempt wins on turn one and two. Uh, out of yeah. any other deck, and like people will be like, "No, Crick doesn't win that fast and stuff like that." And I've I've actually said that in like chats and stuff, and they're like, "How is it like that consistent?" I'm like, "I don't know. My friend built it. I don't I don't know what the hell he's doing." I'm like, he just he just threatens win every yeah. time, like turn one into I don't know what he's doing, but now that I've seen the deck list, I'm like, okay, this is what he's doing. Like there's yeah. so and much stuff in here that just does what you want. Yeah. Um because of how I built the deck, it's so incredibly consistent. And um what you're able to do with this deck and because of its consistency is you're able to mull really low. Like, like I'm floor, talking right. I've I've won on two cards multiple times. Um, <laughs> I'm not joking, I and know. I and I haven't. I these are games that I wasn't even wheeled on turn one. You know what right, I mean? Right, right, right. Um, just like when you see a card like Mana Crypt or Mana Vault, it's essentially it's worth three cards, right? Or right, it's worth right. two cards. You see this card? Jewel and it Lotus? Makes, oh my! 
God. Jeweled Lotus is worth three cards, right? It's worth yeah. three lands. Um, and you have these cards that uh, once you have them, everything kind of just falls into place. Uh, you right. play your fast mana, and then all of a sudden you're able to get Crick out. And then, like, I you can win on turn one with a four with multiple variations of four card hands um like if you have ancient tomb mana crypt sacrifice pyramid of the abyss you draw half your deck if you have ancient tomb mana crypt um or you know ancient tomb mana vault uh or land jeweled lotus right to make your four mana cast crick there's a bunch of different variations that two cards mm -hmm. that like cast crick and then that's why you play like uh, city of traders as well too yeah and then if you have like entomb reanimate or you have uh one of my favorite cards beseech the queen is a uh triple black tutor a card right. uh, with cmc less than or equal to the number of lands you control so what this usually winds up being is a six life be your second copy of entomb because uh, <laughs> you almost you almost always have one land right 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 exactly <laughs> yeah so um you can then have an entomb and a reanimate uh and it just this deck just puts together so so many busted starts um for with the way that i've built it um that's cool i, I like it. i think we've gone over a big chunk of the deck we're, we're hitting around 41 minutes but uh i think we can close it off here i don't know if there's anything else uh, you guys would want to like say on the deck Plans. And I think there's, you know, you can cut out me uh, stumbling in the beginning. <laughs> nah, it's fine. We'll, we're, we're gonna leave. It was only for like literally 20 seconds. It's fine. But is there anything else you guys wanted to like talk about or look into? Because I think this is fine. I think we're good on good on this. Yeah, just final thoughts. I think this is one of the better commander centric decks out there. Oh, very much. It's so. not exactly Turbo Nas, right? But you are threatening wins. This is Turbo. Fast. This is very yeah. much Turbo. You're, you're going turbo, as fast as yeah. Rog Silas. If Frick, not yeah, faster not. in some cases. Yeah, right? you're so, actually going blazy. Like, for Meth Lab, that, I, I was like, John, why did you name it Meth Lab? But, like, now <laughs> I realize this deck is, like, Speed. on actual Speed meth. Speed is my name. I was like, John, we should change the name. I don't know. People are going to think we're weirdos doing meth. And I'm like, never mind. This deck literally is on meth. It is a Meth Lab. Dude. It, it is actually <laughs> Phyrexian <laughs> Meth Lab. Like, this yeah. Frick turns everything into gas like it's insane and you just everything in this deck is just actually just straight gas it does get hurt when you play like when you play certain things that'll stop it um it can get rid of them kind of depending on what it is if it's like creatures and stuff it can kill them with villas and victim of night and random stuff but if it's like enchantment hate it it's gonna hurt definitely but yeah. there's not a uh, lot of enchantment hate right now which is really good yeah. Um, and the main enchantment hate is like rule of law stuff, which Correct. you can play, around. which you can get around. Uh, I see very little decks on rest in peace. I think that's a underrated card though. And we'll talk about that in another video, I'd say. Um, but yeah, I, I'd say, uh, this is, this is pretty good. Um, I don't know. Thank you guys for, uh, watching the, the video and, uh, we'll, we'll see you guys in another one. Yeah. Take care, everybody. Peace out. <laughs>